Hi. About? You are right? Yes, mate. I haven't watched the TikTok that you sent me earlier, I'm afraid. I was okay. Uh, it's okay. nuts today. What I was doing yeah. was sending you it so you remember to so we remember to talk about it. Right. Hold on. I'm gonna go on mute and watch it. So that's um really frustrating. But basically she she asks him a question and then doesn't let him answer. Yeah. And then, um, the, I mean, the thing is, it's on Talk TV, which is a right wing TV channel. Okay. That's that's funded by Murdoch, so it's down the same line as the Sun, the Times. So what what got me? Why I've sent it to you to remind me to talk about it is it says. Yeah. Julia embarrasses animal rebellion protester. Yeah. He doesn't no, she, look embarrassed. He, he is not embarrassed. The bit she tries to embarrass him over, he shoots back at her and says, basically she says, uh, are you a spoiled middle-class person? He went, no, I'm, I'm talking to you for my council house. And, <laughs> and, and the guys that you are moaning about pouring milk over the thing, um, they're from... I don't know, they're from working class backgrounds somehow. I can't I can't really remember the whole thing. But that that Julia embarrasses animal protest animal rebellion protester. No, she didn't. He embarrassed you and you're trying to make out that she did, and it's, it's yeah. bullshit. And then you read all the comments, and the comments are just just you not oh it just oh it sends me mad. It sends me mad. I just don't get it. I, I think no, I, that's, that's something I say a lot. I don't get it. I do get it because I used to do the same, as we know. Well, that's the thing. And it's people who, I guess, don't know any better, don't want to know any different. They're stuck in, you know, we talked in the pod. Oh, is this pre or post? This is we pre. We talked in the pod. We will talk in the pod about <laughs> <laughs> how <laughs> we, will, we will be talking in the pod about People know how people try and spend so much time trying to conform to yeah. your, as you're growing up that then that becomes all you know. And just the idea of doing anything different <clears throat> is so just seems so impossible, yeah, and and unobtainable, and not even something that you would even consider because your whole life has been spent trying to be the same as everybody else, yeah. Absolutely. It's just... and I, I guess I, f I feel like Brian addressing the big crowd outside his house when they all throng there in life of Brian. And he says, you're all individuals. And they say, yes, <laughs> we're all individuals. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. The vegan's the one who says, I'm not. I'm not. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, completely. So, yeah. There we go. There we go. It, it's taken I'll 20 I'll episodes, I'll but I finally got a life of Brian reference in. There you go. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm quite excited about today's podcast, Matthew. Um, I think it's going to be great. We've got a really great guest. We had George on as our first celebrity vegan, and I feel like although our guest is not a celebrity, the social media accounts and the website that they run are fairly well known amongst vegan circles. Yes. Yeah. And also, our guest was mentioned to us in a previous episode and here's a clip i, I like that there was a there's a quote i saw a few, a few months ago about <clears throat> how how much more different does a cow have to be from a dog for you to not eat it because it's, yeah. it's the same you look they look the same they're just bigger yeah completely <laughs> you know, did, you, did, you, did you guys did you guys follow the um the page uh, elwood's dog meat no. yes oh, have you not seen that way it's, it's huh? so funny Okay. It's fantastic. It's fantastic. Basically, it's like a, 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 some vegans who have set up this um, page. I think they're on everything Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. But they basically uh, promote this make believe farm, which, which breeds dogs to kill them, basically, and feed and, and turn them into steaks and things like that. And they'll, they'll say something like, Oh, uh, uh, we've just sent the, the latest Rottweiler family to slaughter. Uh, so we've got these steaks. And they, they, they show a picture of these make believe steaks. And then if you go, if you click onto the website, 
you read it at the bottom it, it, it they admit it they say look we, we're vegans and we're just trying to make you think but they occasionally put online uh, phone calls that they get because they publish their telephone number and they, they they play telephone calls that have been received mainly in america funny enough of people that believe it's true and honestly the utter anger and people threatening to kill them and oh honestly it's, it's the right you can hear the veins popping in with rage that, that, <laughs> they, that they're killing these dogs you know and and like you say what what's the real difference between a cow and a dog apart from one's a pet or, you know um, yeah there's no well one's been bred to be a pet and one's yeah. been bred to be me that's this, it this is Isn't amazing it? sorry it I is looked at it there's a husky um, we had to say goodbye to 268 today. She was harvested peacefully and ethically along with her pack of 22 others. <laughs> and it's a picture of burgers. <laughs> it's awesome. It's so funny. It's so, it is funny. <laughs> on with the show. And if you want to get involved, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or... If you want to email us, if you want to come on the show, I call it a show. Yes. Is it a show? Yeah, I guess it is. It's a show. It's a show. Then you can email us at howiveganpodcast.gmail.com. So basically, Molly, I'll give you, I'll do a proper intro in a minute, but to give you a little bit of background to this, we were interviewing some other vegans back in probably May. May. I was going to say May, yeah. Yeah. And one of them mentioned you as their vegan inspiration oh. because of the because of the the completely different slant on activism. It's like nobody else does it like that. <laughs> and and uh, we hadn't really come across your work at that point. And then we looked at it and we were like, oh, my God, this is just... Amazing. this is like what we aspire to be <laughs> <laughs> oh i love it thank you some of the recent posts have just been just absolutely <laughs> hilarious and wes oh. wes reposted one of your facebook posts and my my mate saw it and he rang me up and he said is is wes still vegan <laughs> said, yeah he said but he's posted about eating dogs. And I was like, uh, have you clicked on the link? And he went, no, I was just really confused. I was like, well, you click on it and see what you think. And he was like, uh... but he, he can't be eating dogs. <laughs> and I, I've had I've had some I've had some proper stick up of a couple of my mates. Are you vegan? But you're quite happy to eat dogs, are you? Well, no. <laughs> Have a look at the website. <laughs> Does that bother you? If so, no. why? <laughs> no, no, that's what you asked. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. what's the problem? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That's uh, it. That's the that's the great hook. It's um, yeah. Absolutely you, it, they just talk to them. You can they carry on the vegan conversation themselves. You're just like, tell me more. How do you feel? Let's do a proper intro then. So I've even written a proper intro for this time. I normally just sort of make it up as we go. Um, sorry, <laughs> sorry to all our previous guests. <laughs> So, oh, this is our 20th episode, by the way, which is not wow. a huge amount, but but considering we thought we'd get about three, three <laughs> episodes and three listeners. So I'm, looking, I'm looking to see if I need like a party, a party popper or something. <laughs> oh, yeah. Have you not got one laying about? No, no? it's not new, not new Year's Eve, damn. I actually have a pinata right behind me. It's right <laughs> up in the back left corner there. Oh, yeah. Oh, not, is it in the shape of a dog? It's a it's a donkey, actually. So, oh, okay, well. fine. I mean, what almost, a great almost what a, what a great episode that would be just molly just kick, <laughs> kicking the bejesus out of a kenyara i was i was thinking about doing some kind of like if i really wanted to be just hated by everyone is mock up some kind of fake dog abuse you know but it's farm you know it's farm related and really try and defend that and yes yeah just really go for it <laughs> yeah i guess that's one of the things you've got to really try and judge how far is too far mm -hmm. because we all see the like slaughterhouse footage don't we of mm -hmm. you know cows getting the bolt through the head and stuff and you think that would probably be too far <laughs> i mean you'd probably it would probably be taken down wouldn't it, it yeah no Facebook it would, would be in 
But yeah. if you could get someone else to share it in outrage, then this, they're bringing awareness to it, right? So I would create the video of like, turns out Elwoods is actually farming dogs and here's what they're doing and you share it and get people mad. And then- Oh my God, that is proper next level satire, that, isn't it? Yeah. That I is just have, I have to be willing to let go of everything and just be like, well, you know, see what happens. Yeah, maybe when you've had enough of it, just put that out and see. <laughs> that's how Italy, I end it. Uh, yeah, that's it. What a way to go. <laughs> I've been wanting to figure out how to get that. What's the exit strategy for this? I think that's it. It's my <laughs> fake farm. Okay, right. Let's do the intro. For our 20th episode, we've lined up an extra special guest. I could say our guest is Molly, a vegan, and our first guest from the USA. But that wouldn't tell the half of it because Molly is a vegan activist who runs our favourite social media account, which we've talked about several times on previous episodes. Over the past year, Molly's website and social media account have gained tens of thousands of followers. Her posts have been shared countless times, and she's earned herself a surprising number of death threats along the way. She puts the laughter in humane slaughter. Our guest today <laughs> is Molly from Elwood's Dog Meat. Hi, thank you for that intro. I love it. <laughs> Thanks for having me. I I can't tell you how pleased I was with laughter in humans. <laughs> He's kept that was secret as well. I love that. That's great. <laughs> laughter. Molly, oh, wow. thank you so much for coming on. We are we are incredibly grateful because I can only imagine how busy running this website and having a proper job <laughs> must make. <laughs> uh yeah, it's a bit it's it's a lot. I might have uh overcommitted a little bit. Uh, <laughs> oh no <laughs> uh but it's fun it's fun work you know yeah absolutely so tell us how did Elwood's dog meat come into being what's the story uh yeah so I've done a lot of tried to do a lot of activism and uh you know I've done like, like cube of truth and I volunteered at farm sanctuaries and uh I talked of ism and you know bothering everyone I know on the internet and uh, I felt like not enough people were listening uh, as, you know, nobody wants to hear anything a vegan has to say. Um, but really, it was just a, um, a bumper sticker idea. Uh, I've been, you know, I, you can make your own bumper stickers. And uh, I wanted to make a really good vegan one. And all the vegan ones were like, you know, vegan is love or just go vegan or peace and veganism. And my husband and I were sharing a car. So we were discussing like, what, what is the best uh, idea? And uh, we were significantly, we were drinking a lot and we <laughs> laughed and we were like, what if it just said Elwood dog meat? Like we were selling it. And then we'd put a second bumper sticker next to it. It was like, why are you mad, bro? And uh, <laughs> so we thought that was a good idea. And then I was like, well, what if it had a website so you could get more information? And I was like, that'd be great. And it looks like it's the company's website. And uh, so I just took a week and put together a website to go with my bumper sticker. And, wow. and then, yeah, it all kind of went from there. Somebody was like, well, you should probably have a uh, social media account with this. So I was like, oh yeah. Cause I, I'm active on Twitter personally. So it's like, I'll make a Twitter account. And then it was just, um, it was probably like three weeks after I put it up, it went viral and I just woke up one day and all my inboxes were flooded and it was, it was death threats and somebody oh, offered right. Everybody wanted to volunteer to help. And it was, uh, there was a grant offer immediately to help run it. Wow. Um, and so it's like, I got really stressed because if I hadn't dug through all 300 emails that I immediately got had, you know, I would have missed it. So I'm like, my husband would just find me like in my pajamas in the hallway, just scrolling my, my messages, trying to get through the death threats to be like, does anybody want to give me money? Oh. <laughs> so, die, yeah. die, 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 die. Can I do you want, do you want some money? <laughs> Star that one for later. Yeah. So yeah, that was it, and it just kind of took off from there. That's incredible. Yeah, that really so. is. So, one of the things that we mentioned in our previous episode was how you have, like, um, Instagram especially, I, I find is so effective for this because you have a lovely picture of like a child hugging a dog <laughs> and it looks so sweet and then you swipe it left and then it's like a picture of steaks <laughs> on a plate 
and it's it's so it's so effective because you, mm. it, even as a vegan you look at it and you go oh my god oh yeah oh yeah it's not oh, good. Yeah. but it just it's just I just find it hilarious oh it is um all that content is based on real content I just I just find it on Instagram and then I just duplicate the words and I you know it's a, a kid so many dairy farmers take pictures of their kids in front of the baby dairy calves and I just find that so sick so I always yeah. try and find pictures of kids with dogs and try and have that same you know and it's just once you once you see it in that perspective suddenly it's really shocking and I don't even have to add anything it's funny how funny it is and it's not supposed to be funny. Like when people are like, is yeah. this a joke? I'm like, it's not a joke, actually. Um, but yeah, it's uh, the all you have to do is change the animal. And suddenly it's just, you can't even imagine that people are talking this way about animals. It's shocking. So, And you mentioned the wording and a lot of it, you could easily, uh, I don't know, maybe this is what you do, but you could easily just co literally copy and paste that from a, from a yeah. dairy post. About that's how what much I do. they love their cows really is that it <laughs> that's it yeah so and effective. actually so if you were instagram's hard to search but facebook is searchable if you look for the sentences i use where i don't mention the word dog you could find the exact post i use all their hashtags uh all i do is you know clean up the grammar a little bit and to make it a little more quicker to read and uh yeah put in a dog and even the pictures, you know, it's a, it's the exact same like woman hugging dog from left. It's woman hugging the cow from the left. It's That's they're doing all the hard work for you. Yeah, and you're just turning it around on them. That's that is just uh, incredibly incredibly yeah. inventive. Well, it's, um, it it makes it much easier too. I mean, the amount of volume of content that I put out is. It would be ridiculous if I was coming up with that on my own. I think the bulk of my time is spent going through uh, farmer Instagram and getting mad and finding what is yeah. the one that makes me the most mad. And that's my new one for wow. the day. Wow. So let's take it back a bit. So how did you like, did, how long have you been vegan? What, and what made, what made you like change or whatever? Yeah. So um, I've been vegan six and a half years now. Um Pascal, I was started out um, just as a regular meat eating person. And about 2011, I met my now husband and he was a, uh, a lapsed pescatarian. And um, I, uh, I met his family and his family was still pescatarian. And I started thinking kind of just more about animals and was like, you know, I, I don't want to hurt them. So if I, if his family has survived so long without eating meat, I could probably be a pescatarian. So I was a pescatarian for a while. And then I read eating animals and, um, learned about how the impact of fish in fishing. And so I was like, I'm going to go vegetarian. So that's what I'm going to do. And, uh, and then the veganism was just a, uh, one late, one late night I was on Twitter and I saw, um, I think it's probably mercy for animals video of somebody sorting chicks into a garbage can. And I was like, what am I looking at? <laughs> So I had to Google that. And uh, I was like, this has just got to be some other country, right? This is not here in the US. And to find out what happened to the male chicks was shocking. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, I was like, wait a minute, why are we, why don't vegans eat dairy? And it was so stupid to be like a 35 year old woman to just be like, oh, you mammals, milk, babies. <laughs> How did I miss that? They're not these magical creatures who just make milk. So uh, yeah, I, it's funny because I was on a work trip and I texted my husband who had been very nice. He's just gone with me on the journey. He's like, sure, you want to go vegetarian? And he cooks for me. So I'm just just grateful being like, can you, can we? Uh, so I was like, can we go, ve can, I was like, can I go vegan? Can we go vegan? And I expected him to say no, and that would be it. And I just feel like that's too hard and we're going to die. So uh, but he was a really good sport about it and was like, sure. I mean, let's try it for a month. And so we tried it and stupidly easy. Like we were like, I guess we're vegan now. So yeah. Fantastic. Six, yeah. six years. Mm -hmm. It's that thing, isn't it? I, I said to you, Matthew, didn't know that a few weeks ago, it seems like there seems to be some shift about six, seven years ago. I don't know. We, we, we discussed it, it might have been when Cowspiracy came out, but there's not, everyone seems to have changed around six or seven years ago. It's mad. I, 
I think that, I mean, I know a lot of people that I know that are vegan went, went vegan around the same time. And it'd be really interesting to talk to, uh, you know, kind of the lead animal rights activist groups to be like, did you change something with your social media about that time? Like, did you start mm-hmm. making more videos on Twitter? Like, why, why didn't I see anything? Why didn't I see chicks in a macerator before, you know, 2016? Because yeah. <laughs> all the people we've had on here, Matthew will correct me if I'm wrong. There's probably four what we've did, we've termed ancient vegans that have been vegan for like plus 20 years. And everyone else has been five, six, seven years. Yeah. And we're up to 20 episodes. So that's around 15 people that have been five, six, seven years. It's mad. Mm. That's really interesting. Yeah. yeah, I'd be curious to see yeah. what happened. But some, Cowspiracy uh, some... definitely was something I watched right yeah. when I went vegan. Yes. Yeah, me too. That was the one that, that did it for me. And it's uh, it needs because I told you about it, Matthew. <laughs> that, is, that is true, actually. Yes, that is true. I thought, well, if Wes can watch that and turn vegan, then I've got to watch this film uh, <laughs> because he's the biggest meat eater I've ever met. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I, I was actually saying that too is like, if I'm going vegan, and it's kind of like if I'm if I'm going vegan, anybody can go vegan, or something is happening, something weird is happening. If I'm the person who's doing this, because yeah, I mean, I I went hunting as a kid. I never, I didn't ever shoot anything. I went hunting once, <laughs> but I went fishing, yeah. and we grew up in a hunting household. And you know, meat. We had a meat freezer. It's just weird. Sorry, whereabouts whereabouts did you grow up then in in the US? Then is that uh, a, is that a yeah. common thing to be going yeah. out? Yeah, yeah. Where I grew up, I grew up in rural Oregon, um, which is the northwest of the of the country. And yeah, I mean, everybody like I did hunter safety when I was 12. And I was just with a whole bunch of 12 year olds. And we all learned how to shoot guns and clean a deer. But we never I mean, it was all theoretical, right? Until you actually get out there. And I'm out there with my gun and my dad and it's four in the morning and uh, just the most beautiful deer crosses into our path. And I'm going, I don't think I want to kill it. I think I want to watch it. Look, look how pretty she is. Uh, so I missed the shot and uh, had a lovely time not, you know, not eating deer that that winter, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Wow. It's weird that because you see like people that will, will post pictures of, like you say, deer, of mm-hmm. animals in the wild and go, look how beautiful it is. This is one of, one of my best mates. He, 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 he goes shooting. And he's mm-hmm. like, you know, deer up in Scotland and like the deers are beautiful, the birds are beautiful up there, whatever. But I shoot them. <laughs> Why? Stop. Why'd you do that? Well, I have th- I have this pinned tweet. Uh, the pinned tweet on my personal Twitter account is, uh, have you ever stopped to just watch animals? They're so much more interesting when they're alive. Like, yeah. I oh, think that I think that there's this um, everyone. I mean, the people I know that still deer hunt love quote quote unquote love nature and love animals and they they don't have an excuse i personally this is my personal thought is like i don't think that men in particular do not have an excuse to go sit in the wild and watch and you know bird watching is so you know thought of as like a nerdy yeah but really, you know, I think fishing too, everyone talks about the reason they like fishing is they like to be out of the lake and they like it peaceful and being with their friends. And like men do not have an excuse to go sit out and sit out in a boat in a lake with their friends and just watch nature. And we should like normalize being, you know, forest yeah. eating or something, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. We should set up a company doing that, Wes. Oh, can you imagine? What, what, are, you do- what are you doing this weekend? <laughs> let's, go, let's go and sit in the middle of a lake. Just gonna go and sit in a lake. Yeah. In the forest. You bring some binoculars oh and some snacks. You've got you've got four hours right there. You've got a beauty, beautiful day. Wow. You've me a, is that a niche in the market we can hold on to? <laughs> mm-hmm. You're gonna add some kind of guide, you know, some kind of thing that makes it seem like an activity, but reality, yeah, you just get out there and sit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, although yeah, you'd you have to although like tough forester or something like that that so that they all still felt manly at the end of it yeah you could like learn how to build a shelter or you know do some kind of survival stuff at the same time but there's let's a not... big observing part <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah let's not forget though we are in the uk and it always pisses it down my rain. so yeah that's true that's true you said about you know when you first went vegan it was it was actually really easy 
So what, what's been the biggest struggle then if, uh, if turning yeah. vegan, vegan wasn't difficult? Yeah, you know, it's funny. I listened to your interview with George from Car- Carnism Debunked. Uh, yes. And I had to really agree with him that the hardest thing is people. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Just uh, when you are fresh and fresh into veganism and you're like, oh my gosh, I just learned this. And I think that if I share this exact same thing with other people, of course, everyone's going to go along with me. And just that shock to show people <laughs> chicks going into a garbage can and they're like, what? I mean, okay. So that's, that's shocking. That's really hard to deal with on a day-to-day basis to suddenly be the weirdo <laughs> is really uh, hard, I think. Um, yeah. But... It's, it's quite a thing, isn't it? Suddenly, because society teaches us to conform you mm-hmm. spend your whole life you know you, you know when you're a kid when you're growing up as a teenager 20s or whatever mm-hmm. you just want to everyone just wants to be normal don't they mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden you you make this decision and you're voluntarily the oddball <laughs> right it, it is a big step isn't it it is and it's i mean i kind of think that that's one of the um the benefits i saw also personally was it it kind of gave me a spine it gave me something to stand up for and believe in that like before then i mean I'm a definite like people pleaser, go along, go with the flow, try to, you know, find out what other people want and be that person. And this was the first time to go, wait a minute. I think I have some principles that now I can't, I can't, I I have to find out who I am. And I think veganism really helped, helped with that, which is just kind of this weird side benefit. I, uh, I discovered soon after I went vegan that I like country music. (laughs) This is news. This is news to me. And do you know what my first favorite song was? It was uh, Chicken Fried by Zach Brown Band, which as a <laughs> vegan is not really compatible, is it? Uh, the uh, Or the uh, the vegan uh, Save a Horse, Ride a Cowboy. Oh, I like that. Oh, yeah. yeah, I might get that tattooed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I really like, I, I like country music sometimes. And uh, it's funny because I also grew up you in- You don't a have West- to pretend it's, it's fine. <laughs> It's okay. okay. Um, but okay, it's fine. funny. So I grew up in this Western themed town, like Western themed, like false fronts, cowboys. I wore a belt buckle at a restaurant I worked at where I served people giant steaks when I was a kid. And uh, it, our town is known for the rodeo and I'd go to the rodeo every year and I hated it, but I loved the people. And I really liked, uh, I really liked watching the animals beat out the cowboys like it was my favorite my dad was like <laughs> stop cheering for the horse i'm like get them stop them <laughs> but as being vegan they're sad because you can't go to the rodeo and cheer for the animals anymore because now like you totally get how horrible this is and uh so i actually just recently discovered uh car racing <laughs> which oh, sounds wow. really awful but i went to my first car race i was like this is the vegan rodeo this is drunk people rednecking it up and just enjoying loud noises that's just completely stupid i don't know so i think i'm gonna start going to race car races <laughs> is that actually no, not nascar races that sort of thing no i went to one that was a little smaller than nascar i don't know if i could actually handle a nascar crowd it was um it was like formula one and right. like people you know people rebuilding old cars and racing them uh but yeah i liked the i like the redneck chaos that i'd been missing Excellent. Awesome. Who's the so, NASCAR racer that we mentioned last week? Was well, no, I don't actually. I don't think it made the edit. Who's the female? Who's the vegan? Lalani Munter. Le- Leilana, yes, she's a, she's an American racing driver. I'll have to look her up. Okay. Become I'll she become her biggest fan. Yeah, there you go. I need a... <laughs> you could get her. You could get Elwood Stumpmate on the side of a car. I was thinking about that. If there's she's a in the Indy Five Hundred. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my gosh, wait. I have to... <laughs> Go on. <laughs> oh, I have to tell you my uh my sister-in-law just got the Elwood Dog Meat logo. Like the, her kids are having like a haunted house and they sell t-shirts with logos from local businesses on the back to sponsor this haunted house. And she <sighs> she paid to get the Elwood Dog Meat logo on the back of all these kids' t-shirts and I don't know if anybody knew, like from the like the parent association knew what this was. So I'm gonna get my t-shirt today, but <laughs> wow. That is awesome. If yes. that doesn't make the news, oh, nothing will. I mean, oh. a bunch of kids wearing 
Kitchenette's <laughs> advertising dog meat. That is brilliant. Oh, her kids are going to get kicked out of school. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. We didn't get any sweets. Sorry, candy. We didn't get any candy at all. Oh, you've ruined Halloween. Halloween <laughs> was ruined by dog meat. It's oh, so God. wrong, but so great. <laughs> I can't wait to see what others are on the back of the shirt. Like, I hope there's some kind of barbecue restaurant or something for contrast. Yeah. Probably oh, going in. Yeah. Um, do you, are you supplied by Elwoods? That sort of thing. <laughs> that would be magic. Yeah. Did we get restaurants to be contacting you? Yeah, we need some. We need some of your meat. Yes. Uh, so when you when you went vegan, then so what did your friends and family think about it? Um, I actually like every step of the way was me really trying hard not to become vegan. So it was like, first, I'm not going to pay for meat. And then I'm not going to, I'm not going to eat any, I'm not going to eat any meat that I've paid for because I don't want to offend anyone. So I was like going to people's houses. And then when I started, when I actually got into the ethics of it and I personally didn't want to eat it anymore, then I would make my husband eat everything. I'd just be like, can you, they'd serve me a plate and I'd be like, "Mm," and then I'd be like, can you finish this for me? And then we started thinking like, this is so like, how many hurdles do we go through to try? Yeah. Oh, sooner so or later you've got to you've got to come out of the closet, haven't you? The closet. Yeah, so uh yeah, I uh my it's like mostly friends and coworkers, like the it was it was hard, you know. I if, I think friend friends specifically just tried to avoid talking about it with me. And but the opposite is coworkers always brought it up. It's just that I think mm. it's like a nervous tick. They can't like we're out somewhere and they're like, this is Molly. She's vegan. And they'd introduce me. I'm yes. just, why? That's not my identity. I mean, I'm not yes. even there. I went to like a work event and uh, somebody announced that they're like, I heard it was the, the, the waiter came out and he was like, so I heard that there was a vegan at the table and everybody's like, it's Molly. And suddenly yeah. I'm like, I'm now representing vegans and I've only been vegan like a month and a half. And <laughs> everyone's so everyone's talking about the hunting that they do and the time they went vegan once and like they could never give up cheese and I'm just sitting there nodding going okay thank you oh, what to do with That's, all this that is such a difficult period because you haven't got your arguments all lined up mm-hmm. and formulated correctly you're still finding your way yourself oh yeah I remember really... my I remember my uncle being like and it's funny now god I wish I could rewind it and go back in time to be ready for this but he was like <laughs> he was like but you know that almonds uh, use up a lot of water and I was like oh my god he's right I can't be vegan almonds use water <laughs> and now I'm just like oh, such a... damn it don't eat just don't drink almond milk it's fine or the water you know we all know the water usage for meat so uh but yeah I think so that's actually what um when I first went vegan because of just even those two com- two or three conversations I bought every vegan book I could find. I watched every documentary. I'm like, I'm going to be ready to fight. And then nobody wanted to talk about it. Once I had all my facts straight, <laughs> and I'm just like, I guess I just have to share this on social media and slowly be blocked by all my friends. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know if it's a nas- an international joke. There's, there's that thing, in, um, um, how do you know someone's vegan? They'll tell uh, you. Yeah, yeah. And actually, yeah. We, we've said before, how do you know someone's vegan? Everybody else will tell you. I know. I know. You try we're... and keep it as quiet as, as possibly can, and everyone else is like, "Where's his vegan? He's vegan. Him he's over vegan. there. He's... <laughs> Fuck off. Leave me alone." <laughs> I'm only I'm only telling you I'm vegan because you're asking me why I'm not eating donuts. Like that's it. I yes. I wish there was a vegan donut. You don't have them. I don't. I don't, don't want to look like I'm an anti-donut person. <laughs> can you imagine? <laughs> because they don't even eat donuts who doesn't eat a donut well i found that like uh it was much i was much more sensitive about being a person turning down like celebratory foods than i was about being vegan like i don't want you to think that i'm not somebody who's fun i'm totally fun i totally want to eat pie like i want to eat all the pie i want to eat all the pizza i'm not here for my health so you had to clear clarify yeah that's true actually we had a, a thing at work recently and the the top top boss brought in like biscuits and a big tub of chocolates and he was offering them round to everyone and I was like, Oh, no thank you. He was like, Oh, you're being very good. I was like, 
not not being good through choice, am I? <laughs> it's, it's just you haven't bought the right things. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Well, and I think especially for um, I hate to stereotype, but women are often, you know, God, don't cancel me for saying this. Women are often dieting. I said it. I'm sorry. No, but, I think that's, so that's, I don't, I want, that's <laughs> accepted fact. I think that's. I don't fine. want people to think that I'm. I'm like no. I, I'd love to eat as much as all these pancakes we had at this office offsite. <laughs> I'm sadly eating an orange. <laughs> I hate yeah, so uh, since you've been vegan, then how have things changed for you? Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, I think I mentioned earlier, like it definitely made me a lot more confident and, uh, you know, willing to speak up about things that I, I don't find right. And I'm much more focused before. I, I mean, I, I have my degree in writing and I write for a living and I kept being like, I'm going to be a novelist. That's what I'm going to do. And I just couldn't find, you know, the, I couldn't find the thing I wanted to write about. And I was like, it's, it's going to come to me. And this is just, it's so, I think veganism is so interesting because it connects so many things, so many things I'm interested in and, you know, environmentalism and animals and people and food. And so this has made it's made the world much more exciting finding out where all the intersections between all of these things and then meeting all the people too. Like you're, I'm meeting so many amazing people. I've made so many new friends um, through activism and, you know, just on, even online. Um, so, and uh, I think just also being willing to try new things. I mean, we, you have to try new things if you're vegan. So it's, that's really exciting to just be like, Oh, I'm not stuck in the, uh, who who I was you you know you're not a stale person at 25 and being like this is who I am and what I believe you're like I'm open let's talk about things so yeah yeah did we both did we both get vegan at 40 I think that's right isn't it was uh yeah I I or went 41 no I went two weeks after my was 40. birthday oh yes. wow and then I was just I was, yeah so I'm Three months older than you. There's, so there's, there's so a. I must have been forty as well. <clears throat> I literally did not a point in that way, like everyone knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, so uh, there's a pie, there's there's a pie shop, a pie in pie shop in Manchester, and we went there for my birthday, and I had yes. like a, I had a meat pie, and then two weeks later I was what? like, I need to go back because they do a vegan pie, and I need to go <laughs> try it. Uh, yeah. You know, I had I had venison. <clears throat> I'd never had it before. Oh. idea unbelievable yeah and i feel awful about it now uh-huh. but and i remember this very clearly because i sat opposite my wife and she said well, that's deer and i was like well that's no different to cow is it mm-hmm. and thinking about it now that's huh? obviously very clear isn't it but that was just like a throwaway remark mm-hmm. and actually that's kind of like the the idea of elwood's dog yeah. thing, isn't it it's, i think if that... you eat one why wouldn't yeah. you eat the other? Yeah, and I think you that that's... Either eat all animals or don't eat any animals. And I think that's like... So for me, just before I went vegan, I lived abroad in China and I wasn't vegetarian or anything and I was teaching English and uh, I ate everything. And it was it was amazing how there, there was... T- it was two mindsets of going, am I really eating turtle or something? And then going if this grosses me out, why am I not grossed up by the other things I eat? And I found Mm. myself shifting more and more to (laughs) eating tofu. And my, (laughs) my college, my, I was there with my college boyfriend and, uh, I can't believe I'm telling this to a vegan audience, but I think that you'll, uh, you'll enjoy it. He really liked to go to the places where he could pick out the animal because they had a lot of live animals. And those were the meals that I wouldn't go with him. I'd be like, I'm going to stay home. I, I don't, I don't, he, and he and his friend, his British friend would go to these restaurants where they could pick out the animal. And it's funny that that it is, it's that feeling of if I start putting up barriers between what I can eat and what I don't eat, what is the difference? And like, you go and see a rabbit and you're like, Oh, I, I like this rabbit. Would I eat it? Probably not. I see this cat. They are the same animal. Nice. <laughs> you know? So, yeah, I think that really that I think that that lay dormant, you know, it was only it was only two years later that I went vegetarian. But it is so sad that it takes two years. You know, it'll it. That's it. Yeah, absolutely. Can, it's can, it, but it's it's how we're all brought up, isn't it? Mm-hmm. To, to dis- disassociate between cute animals and 
it's something you pick up in the supermarket mm -hmm. because it doesn't look like an animal most of the yeah. time. <laughs> as long as it doesn't look like an animal, it's fine. Yeah. yeah, that's it. Like, I remember going out for a meal. I think, yeah, it must have been a family meal. And my, da my dad had like a trout mm -hmm. and it came out as a, literally a whole trout. And I was like, <sighs> just maybe, and I wasn't vegan at the time. I was only a kid and I was like, that makes me just feel sick. Like, oh. you've got the eye and the mouth. Look, <laughs> how can you do that? And he was like, he said the same. He was pescatarian. So for him, it was, yeah, you know, just just another meal. And he was like, but but you eat dead dead pigs and dead cows. And I was mm -hmm. like, yeah, but they don't look like dead pigs and dead cows, do they? <laughs> you, you know, it's funny that it re that reminds me of, like, one of the things, I think this was, this was the switch from pescatarian to vegetarian. While I had read Eating Animals, Eating Animals talked a lot about bycatch. And I, I think at that point I said, well, then I'm only going to eat fish that I catch. And then, you know, that'll be very rare. And so I'm going to only eat the fish that I catch. And then I went, you know, I was on a trip to Mexico and I caught a barracuda and I was like, or I don't know, some, some long skinny fish. And, uh, I couldn't bring myself to kill it. Like I caught it and I know you have to club it. And as a kid, when I fished, that was never my job. That was somebody else's job. Mm -hmm. And so as I looked at it, I was like, oh, I can't do anything. And, and the guy just took the fish out of my hand. He's like, don't worry, I'll take care of it. And he clubbed it. And I felt so horrified. And then he put it in the, like the little cooler and he shuts the cooler. And I'm like, okay, now I don't have to think about that anymore. Uh, but I don't think I could do this again. And then at the end of the trip, we opened the cooler and it was still alive. And it was just, oh my God. And that was the last fish I ever ate was like the, the choice of the choice of seeing you know, <laughs> the closer, the more baby steps you get, I'll only eat it if I kill it. And if you realize you can't kill it, yeah. you're like, what am I doing? Wow. So our next question <laughs> is, is, is the question that is given to all of the vegans all the time because we're, because all those people are idiots. So where do you get your protein and other nutrients from? Oh my God, Labrador, you know? <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Most protein dense of all the breeds. Uh, Fair enough. <laughs> Why not? Uh, no, uh, plants, you know. <laughs> but, you know, I do think, um, I do actually think that it's, we. it's fun to make fun of that joke, right? It's fun to be like, oh, where do you get your protein? But I do think we kind of do newbie vegans a disservice by like brushing off the nutrition aspect and sure, like, you know, people aren't going protein deficient but I do think that, you know, we lose a lot of vegans who, who start out without doing any planning and they're just like going to eat Oreos and, you know, vegan hot pockets and suddenly they feel sick. What's wrong with that? Yeah. Uh, I that's, so. that's the thing, isn't it? Oh, I was, I tried being vegan for a fortnight or a month. I did Veganuary and I was really sick. And I ate spaghetti you know, yeah, but... night for a week and I shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. What a surprise. Anybody oh. would. Yeah. Uh, so I was really lucky that when I went vegan, I knew my town had a vegan nutritionist. She would do sliding scale. Uh, um, what is that? Helping. She'd help me. Like, so I, I, I worked with her for a month and she looked at the food I was eating and was telling me, she's like, you, you know, here's what a vegan plate actually looks like. It's not just starch. You know, here's how many vegetables you should be eating. And she was like, we need to talk about how often dessert is happening. I'm like, shut up. <laughs> uh, but I, I think that that was really helpful. And I think, um, I think just when you first go vegan is doing the research to make sure that you're just, you know, keep yourself safe. Make sure like, for example, the other thing that I realized was last year I had to have a B12 injection because I didn't really truly understand how vitamins worked. And I thought that you could just take one when you felt like it. And it's not an everyday thing. And so I was thinking like, I don't know, you know, three, one week and then the next week. And then I ended up getting so low. I was like, why are my hands numb? And I went to the doctor like, oh my God, it's just, <laughs> you stupid vegan, <laughs> take your B12. Uh, <laughs> So PSA, take your B12. It was funny. The injection helped immediately. I was like, all right, energy. Uh, so take your B12. Um, and I think B12 is actually more key than protein, isn't it? Yes, yes. Pro protein is really easy to get, but B12 is what we need supplements for. Exactly, basically. exactly. So yeah, it's. I, I don't mean to say that, you know, you need to see a nutritionist to tell you how much protein to eat, but 
just so you're not just eating a sleeve of Oreos for dinner and being like, I'm vegan. Great. That'd be a good dinner though. The I know. Heart, I the know. heart of any dinner. I know. Yeah. If you plan out the rest of your day though, that's how you can end it with a sleeve of Oreos. So. <laughs> okay. So for you then, what's the best thing about being vegan? Oh, uh, get to kill dogs. I get to kill dog. I know my <laughs> dog meat farm. Who would have thought all this time ago I would be running a dog meat farm? You know, I think there's the obvious. Like, I I love the relief of being able to look at animals in the eye and feel just okay with it, and I feel much more connected and not guilty. Meeting passionate people has been really exciting. Finding finding common ground with people that you know. I'm talking with you, you guys now. So that's just, I mean, how interesting is that? And also amazing food. Just, I was definitely a, not even, I can't even say meat and potatoes, but it was just like, you know, protein, everything was separate on a plate, you know, a protein, a starch and a vegetable, and that's all you ate. And suddenly I'm just, everything's like, there's bowls and oatmeal and, you know, cool and restaurants color. and color. Oh, things are Things have got color on your plate. It's like oh. you look at your plate and it's like it's like a rainbow. It's beautiful. It's yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. I love so. it. It's better than the sea of orange when you go to like a buffet <laughs> at a party and it's just everything's orange or beige. Oh my God. Driving so driving cross country and seeing all the billboards for cracker barrel or you know, the local cafe or something, and all the meals look just, exactly just, the same. Oh, okay. Just explain to us what Cracker Barrel is, because that's not something that I'm. You don't familiar. have Cracker Barrel. Oh, I'm pretty sure no. we don't have. Cracker I don't. Barrel. I don't think we I've. started actually... getting Taco Bell recently, haven't we? Ooh. Yes, I've seen a few yeah. of those open now. They have good vegan food at Taco Bell. Oh. Yeah. yeah, that's. Good that's I think uh, there's one in Manchester. Actually, I think there's a Taco Bell shop in Manchester. Oh, check. That is great yeah. garbage food. Uh, Taco Bell and Burger <laughs> King is the uh, our vegan uh, road trip foods. Um, Cracker Barrel, though, is I don't think I've ever been to do a Cracker Barrel. It's a string of uh, it's a chain of down home American country food, you know, chicken fried steak and mashed potatoes and pancakes and eggs and stuff. Well, they recently it's funny. They recently added a vegan uh, sausage and everybody was up in arms. They're like, don't push this woke meat on me. And ah, everybody was really oh mad. Oh, my gosh. Oh, if you look up uh, any what news stories. Say woke meat. Oh, that's what they called it. It was like woke, woke, woke sausage. Don't give us that woke sausage. <laughs> Uh, Cracker Barrel is really popular in rural areas. Uh, so if you look up woke any <laughs> look up Cracker Barrel woke sausage, you're gonna find some. Oh, uh, it was it was great. The comments. It, I think it started on uh, Facebook when they advertised that they got it, and then all these comments were uh, people so mad. <laughs> the the patrons. Uh, I'm not gonna go there anymore. If you if you even offer me a vegan option. So oh. <laughs> not that they were offering it instead of anything else, just this it's just an addition, to the menu. an addition. Wow. It didn't replace anything. And people were just how do not infiltrate the cracker barrel. <laughs> yeah. So that's their, hilarious. Their billboards, their billboards are all the same yellow foods. And uh I actually used one of their lines for Elwoods. It was like, you can taste the care or something like that. And I was like, put that next to a dog and you mentioned something earlier that, that blew my mind. Chicken fried steak. Yeah. What's that? Ah. Oh, one thing. It is. I thought there so, was a comma after fried and steak. but uh. Yeah. So if I remember right, it would be like a chicken breast. So it has, it's not like a, it's not like a chicken patty. It's not like ground up. So it'd be yeah. that. And then it's breaded and fried. So it is basically a giant breast chicken nugget. And I don't know why it's called a steak unless it's because it's so big. Oh, uh, right. I'm with you. Okay. Right. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. So, no, so it's not. It's not what I was thinking was. I was thinking like this. <laughs> like chicken or a steak wrapped in chicken and then fried. Uh, oh, my God. You guys are going to wow. be excited about my uh, turducken that we put out every day. <laughs> Yeah, with the dogs we did it last I like, I like saying that we do this every year we did it last year we i i did this last year so we're i'm gonna do it again and it's i have a chart of the different dog breeds by size and you can choose which one to stuff inside the other for your i think i can't remember what i called it. it's like a turdoggin oh right it's the turdoggin oh my god there, there is a kind because um that if you remember matthew there was a thing is it you Bernie Whitting still yeah he used on yeah 
I think it was him. He did like a traditional, ancient Christmas feast, and it was like a. It was all with game birds, game bird inside, game bird inside, game bird. This thing was huge, mm. and then cooked it, and then cut it all. Oh, just oh, weird. So gross. So gross. Mm. Yeah. When when you do it with dogs, suddenly people get really mad. It's weird. But birds are okay. Birds are fine. Stuff yeah. them into each other. Mm. Yeah. Why not? Jesus. Yeah. So. I, I mentioned in the intro, and this is a very slight tangent, but mm-hmm. about the, the death threats, and this seems a good yeah. time to bring that up. Davin talked about the uh, sort of uh, Cracker Barrel um, <laughs> issue oh, and all that sort of thing. Yeah. So these are genuine things, and I know you've you've posted a few sort of recordings of yeah. people who've left messages. Yeah. What? <laughs> when I can't ask what they're thinking, but how does how does that get resolved do you just do they just ring and then it's a voicemail and that's it or is there any yep. sort of further contact or that's it <laughs> that's it uh i tried calling people back a few times and it, it's just it's pretty time consuming and i'm actually was hoping to in the next year to set up um try and fi- see if i could find vegan activists who are interested in doing something like this calling people back because i have oh, wow. i have that yeah. i mean i have thousands and thousands of unheard voice messages just because I don't have enough time and and so half of them are people ordering and you, you know they're being funny I don't know if they're vegans or they're not vegans they're every, they they're every being funny <laughs> yeah <laughs> and if not I mean if not they're ordering meat the way they order other meat so uh but uh yeah and then every so often there's death threats and those are very enjoyable because they're I think that these are people who are going through the vegan experience they're very emotional they are very upset. They want to find out where the farm is. And they're going to stop us. They're, they've called a lot of people have called the police. They've called the city government. They've called PETA. I'm suddenly like, oh my gosh, you see the reason for PETA now. You you now suddenly care. <laughs> you who probably hate it. You're like, call PETA. Why is PETA letting this happen? Uh, so uh, yeah, uh, but a lot of a lot of threats to you know burn down my thing. And, and I think I think the scariest part is when someone says something like. I figured out where you are and I go, I'm thinking as somebody who's doesn't really live in the same place all the time, I worry about who they have found. And I'm like, please, I hope you Google yeah. some things between here and when you show up wherever you are. And I highly doubt wherever you are is going to be a dog farm with 15,000 dogs. So I think that we're, pr- we're all pretty safe. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't really think that the death threats obviously are not real. But uh, I mean, they're real to the person making them. But yeah, sure. I saw it. I saw it in a thread. I think it was on Facebook where there was someone having a proper rant. This is disgusting. Usual outrage. <laughs> and then, and then someone went, "Have you actually clicked on the website yet?" And they clicked on it, and they were like, "Oh, sorry about that. I didn't realize um, what you're doing is really good and it's really funny." <laughs> uh, I so I keep a thread on Twitter that's those types of conversations, and. Uh, usually the the more violent a person is at the beginning of a conversation these are through uh, these would be facebook messages and the more violent they are at the beginning the more willing they are to have the conversation all the way through because if they once they figure it out they're the people who've felt you know it's rare for that person to double down and go why why this is completely different they might go oh i either i appreciate what you're doing or like i don't agree with you but you know, carry on. Um, so, and I keep, I keep a thread of those. And I call it, it was my lost customer thread. <laughs> <laughs> and I always, yeah, I share it. Like somebody was like, oh my God, I was, I was holding my cat in my lap and just sobbing as I was reading through your website. And then it finally all clicked and, you know, give me some resources to, you know, I'm interested. And I was like, share it as the farm and be like, that's not the point. You just, you're supposed to look at how the farm is raised and be okay with it. And I mean, the animals are raised, so. Wow. I'm literally dreading asking the next question, but what's your, what's your favorite vegan product at the moment? Doodle milk. You know, the golden doodle milk is a big (laughs) seller. I enjoy it. It's very creamy. goes good in your coffee, (laughs) Uh, (laughs) but it's actually a Butler soy curls. I really like soy curls. Have you had them? Ooh, what what are they? I know I, I would think I don't think that they're there, but I'm sure you have a version of them. It's like dried soy protein. It's in a curl, it's probably um 
two and a half, that's like the length of your finger. Um, and they're dried. And so you rehydrate them and cook them the way you'd cook chicken, like chicken strips. So you can put them in tacos and you can put them in sandwiches and they're really good. You can buy them on Amazon, Butler soy curls. They're actually made in Oregon by some non-vegans who are, I think they're just, or maybe I think they're vegetarian. It's a religious group that makes them and they're really good. Oh, okay. I'm assuming okay. Matthew, we Matthew, Matthew's looking. I'm assuming it's a little bit like um. Yes, I, I think from the pictures that's what um it looks like. And there's quite a few posts. If I've just googled soy curls UK, there's quite a lot of posts like on Reddit saying where can I get soy curls in the UK. Oh yeah. <laughs> so I think maybe that's a part of the market that hasn't really developed yet. Oh, too bad. But soon. I mean, it's everything is. As veganism spreads, I think soy curls will cross the ocean. And uh, yeah. there's there's Facebook groups for for any of your uh, American listeners. There's uh, soy curl fan Facebook groups where you can join, and uh, people Brilliant. share all, all the vid, all the meals that they're making with them. Wow. And their cooking tips and stuff. Oh wow! Oh, I like that. Yeah, That's we. Good. My husband bought. You can buy them in bulk, and my husband bought like it was like a garbage bag full of them we didn't even have a place to store <laughs> just carrying around stacking on them as you go rehydrating them one at a time <laughs> yeah. so what advice would you give to anyone who's thinking about going vegan oh yeah just uh learn as much as possible while you're still passionate um i think uh when you're when you the beginning when you're interested, like I said, for my journey was like, I wanted to be ready with all the answers to fight people. But later on, you might have to fight yourself, you know, when things get hard. Yes. So have this, uh, have this foundation that you've already created with all the knowledge, all the reasons you wanted to go vegan. So that way, you're, you're not more susceptible to temptation to quit, you know, watch every documentary, horrify yourself <laughs> up front, watch, you know, um, not just game changers you should be you know dominion just wrecked me and uh i think everyone should get wrecked by dominion and you don't you can't unsee that stuff and you can't forget it and you can't talk yourself out of it once you once you know all mm -hmm. that information so yeah that's a good show. yes because i think it was maybe it was george's episode that we said there was a similar thing and it was like people who aren't vegan aren't bothered about whether you're vegan or not anymore they actually they would prefer it if you weren't <laughs> right right it's easier for them isn't it so yeah no one's gonna say no no stay on the stay on the wagon stay on the wagon they'll be like yeah hey, have a bit of chicken yeah you know I... so you you're the person who's got to keep yourself mm -hmm. keep yourself vegan aren't you yeah, it is. It, and actually, I thought about that, too, when I was listening to that episode. It was that is it is very true. Everyone cheers you on uh, if you're going to if you're going to cheat. Everybody loves it. Uh, it was funny because uh, I went when I went vegan, I was at a company that there's another vegan. And it was, so ridiculous. Hardcore. He had vegan tattoos. He was a, he was like a straight edge, hardcore vegan punk guy. And in the time that I was there, he stopped being vegan. <laughs> and my coworkers, like I was, we were at some work event and they were going out for a steak with this guy and cheering him on. And he was so excited. And I was like, what, like he could hardly look me in the eye. I was like, what are you doing? And how could he turn it down when he's got, you know, 15 of his coworkers, like ch chanting his name, being like, yeah, oh we'll come God. back. I was like, I can't, I can't, I gotta go. <laughs> Yeah. that's bizarre isn't it just for a steak and then you have to get all your vegan tattoos covered up or i got it it's and it started it because it's his first excuse was uh he does like long distance you know bike races and he was having trouble getting getting all of his food when he was traveling really lightweight i don't know oh, uh, and i was like but that's how does an excuse and how does that translate to going out for steak with your coworkers? Yes. like Christ. do what you have to do on your bike race i guess but uh, when you're back in your real life steak, I don't know. Oh, hmm. So p apart from him, who's your vegan inspiration? <laughs> uh, oh, my gosh. Uh, I'm sure everybody says Earthling Ed. 
Uh, but he was like, just the first person to talk through things logically that really like, it makes sense going, he has a, he has a book, I think it's the 35 arguments, uh, against veganism or for veganism or something like that. And it's just, it's the, it's the five thing or the 35 things everybody says, and it's a free ebook you can download from his website. And I totally, as soon as I went, try to go vegan, I downloaded it and printed it and I read through it. I was like, ready. Okay. I get it. The, the caveman, the, the, the logic of like doing the least harm, all these things. Um, and right. And I also think like the two other people that really influenced me, um, I mean, Miyoko Shiner of Miyoko's butter. She, I don't know if you know, Miyoko's in the UK, she does, um, vegan butter and cheese. And she's just a phenomenal, phenomenal business businesswoman who has just taken, taken the vegan plant-based sphere by storm in the U S with her products and really standing up for the animals. And on LinkedIn right now, she shares these posts that are very targeted, like shots fired at other vegan businesses for not being like, why aren't you doing this for the animals? Like you can sell butter. It has a picture of a cow on it that tells you why you'd eat this butter, as opposed to just trying to appeal to a broad non-vegan audience and try not to offend them. She's like, I don't, my butter will speak for itself. You do not need to, I don't need to pull any of my punches. I think that she's just phenomenal. And the way that she is and I, you know, I work in the vegan sphere. So being, being bold and trusting your, trusting your customer to be like, you have to have a reason to eat this. And I'm going to tell you why you should eat this as opposed to just hoping that, hoping that people discover you out of, you know, getting information from somewhere else. So, so, and also, I don't know if you just, the undercover investigators are also just huge inspiration. Like, oh my God, did you hear about the Smithfield trial this week? Um, good God, Uh, anybody who's doing open rescue or any undercover videos just you know to make sure that people like me see that original video of the chicks in the in the macerator i mean those are i i think those are the biggest heroes in the animal rights movement are these undercover investigators so mm. so yeah. the smithfield they basically uh, i don't want to say kidnapped rescued mm-hmm. uh, some animals and then were arrested and put on trial mm-hmm. and then were found not guilty, not guilty. on the basis that on the basis that they were they were actually rescuing them it wasn't right. theft it wasn't theft of theft. a, of a, yeah. of a pr- um, product <laughs> of a product that's it it was a rescue of a of, of a being an animal in need yeah um mm. and just their intentions the intentions of the activists going in there specifically filming and documenting everything they saw in order to make sure that you know if or when this goes to trial they have all of this footage that maybe wouldn't be shared otherwise like this is the sensational stuff that the the animal agriculture the the industry wants to make sure nobody ever sees it and so how else can we see it than by going on trial and and talking about it and sharing Mm -hmm. these pictures of these injured animals so um i think it's just it's so smart and needed and i mean it as a as an activist who just does online activism um it's it's so noble and i'm yeah, they're just inspiring. On a completely different tack, then. What's your favorite <laughs> vegan vegan restaurant? Ah, <laughs> uh, oh yeah. Uh, Elwood's has a uh, a food cart that we do every weekend. Um, <laughs> no, I'll I'll be serious. Uh, so being in or in Portland, Oregon is like vegan food mecca. Um, oh, we wow. have. Oh my god! If you're going, if you just want to go on a vacation to uh, eat food, Portland, Oregon is the place. Uh, and if you happen to be in the area. Blackwater is a great punk vegan bar that has just amazing um, hamburgers and sandwiches and um, dough donuts has is a vegan donut shop uh, off the griddle is a great breakfast spot. I mean, but it's funny because since I've been away from Oregon, uh, it's been harder to find, you know, really good vegan food. So um, I've been into the uh, looking for the Indian food and the Thai food. <laughs> One thing I found, I went 2019 we went on a family trip we went we were in california and then we went to new york and what we found was that either restaurants were vegan or not vegan like over here probably most places now you will you will have a a restaurant and there will be at least one yeah or two vegan options on the menu but Mm -hmm. there didn't seem to be much 
crossover in some of the places that we went and maybe we just weren't very lucky with the places that we visited but it was either one or the other not sort of a mixture I felt that to be the same yeah um and I was in um I was in Spain and then I went to actually went to Manchester to visit some friends when I was in Spain and uh just the the vegan options in Europe were just phenomenal in just a normal grocery store how many yogurts you have to choose from and how many um plant-based meats and just every it just seems so normal and going to the restaurants and having an option no matter what uh here yeah you got to call ahead you've got to you've got to call them (laughs) the restaurant be like do you use lard in your beans and you've got to you've got to concoct a vegan thing from their menu items yourself and ask them for it and it's just very uncomfortable um and if you go to a place that has vegan options and they just have one, generally it's going to be really bad. It's like, you know, it's made by some chef who hates vegans and he's like, well, here's your rice and tofu and I'm not going to season it. And you better just you're happy there is oh. anything for you. So is that why you take a bin bag of soy curls around with you everywhere? Yes, so you can yes. just say, chuck, chuck a few of those in the pan. Yeah. For you, please. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I, ha- I mean, it's funny cause I have been, I have been more bold about bringing stuff in. Like I'll bring my own cheese into a pizza shop and be like, would you just put that on there? I, I don't want to just eat vegetables on some bread or uh, bringing, you know, fake pepperoni or, you know, bring my own. We went to Burger King and we just had our own mayonnaise. <laughs> so uh, trying to be uh, OK with being that person. So, yeah. Well, I think it's uh, kind of needs must, isn't it? You've Yeah. Like you say, you don't want to eat bland a bland bit of tofu if, if no. it helps to make it nice but it's frustrating isn't it that you've got yeah it. it is and especially because it, if you're doing that with other people and they're like oh this is how you this is how vegans eat and you're like no it's because you chose a restaurant that has shitty options <laughs> excuse me yeah it's just like uh, no this is not how y- if you go if you went with me to that vegan restaurant we could have had something amazing but instead i'm eating a, a dry salad and french fries and beer we we developed this question a couple of months ago and it's because we live in despair. So if, do you think there is any hope for the future? Uh, it depends on the day. Uh, today, yes. I think <laughs> <laughs> uh, today people are nice. I don't know if it's just from talking to you two. Uh, I think that there's hope. I think that, you know, we're, <laughs> yeah. I mean, if there's people like you guys out there and and other people who are going vegan based on something as silly as a dog meat website, I mean... There's got to be, there's got to be some more way to like infiltrate and change more people. Uh, but then on other days, especially if I spend a lot of time on farm Twitter, uh, I hate everyone <laughs> <laughs> no hope. and I'm glad I don't have children. Uh, so, you know, depends, depends on the day. Excellent. Okay. Fair it's been an That's absolute fair. pleasure, Molly. Thank you for your time. It really uh-huh. has been cool. Thank you so much. And thanks for the, thanks for the invite and for having this podcast. It's really, it's really entertaining. I'm a fan. I have something very important to say. Okay, go on then. You start with it. I can't believe she said she thought we were really interested. (laughs) Do you know what? If we'd have had more than two minutes left, I would have picked her up on that. I mean... What greater tagline? These two guys are quite interesting. Oh, <laughs> interesting. Really interesting. Really, really interesting. interesting. Yeah, I'll go quite, but really interesting. I've never been called interesting in my life. I think I'm one of the most dull people alive. But if... if we, give, if we give her hope. Yeah. That's insane. We give people hope. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're like the Death Star plans when they're given to Princess Leia at the end of Rogue One. <laughs> what a comparison. Many... <laughs> <laughs> Many brethren died to get us this information. Well, I suppose the animals did. Loads of animals died for us yeah. to start a podcast that barely anyone listens to, except people in please, Colombia and wherever else they <laughs> listen to. God bless them. <laughs> thank all the people that do listen. Thank you. And I guess yeah. you're oh, interested. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, if we're not interested and you keep coming back, then really you've only got yourself to blame. Yeah. That's, yeah, you uh, chose. You choose to listen to us, so you carry on. Yeah, carry we are on. the Death Star plans of podcasts. I'm actually um, loving. I'm actually loving series two. I was thinking about this. We had a big gap. We may as well call this season two. Oh, that's a good shout. Okay, and that's not been All discussed. Right, yes. But I'm quite happy with that. No. 
That's a that's a good point actually because we did the um, best of episodes, then we did one more, I think, didn't we? That was just us chatting. Yeah. And then we had a month off, didn't we? Yeah. And we come back with with not not to not to put down on anyone that came before because they're all great and we were finding our feet. But we have had some of some of the greatest podcasts we've ever put out there. Okay. In our, I think in let's our... say the greatest podcast that anyone's put out there. <laughs> yeah, why not? Let's go with that. We're the, we're the Death Star Plans. We're the Muhammad Ali of podcasts. Sting like a butterfly. No, that's not it, is it? Float like um, a butterfly, sting like a vegan. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I honestly, I'm oh yeah, brilliant. I'm, I'm, I'm made up for today. I was, I was having, I've been having a rubbish week, and today's made me chuckle. So good, happy days. That's the whole point. And I know I made a joke of it at the start about putting the laughter in humane slaughter, but which was genius, by the way. Thank you. Those posts are a source of huge enjoyment for me. If you've never seen Elwood's dog meat on social media go and please please go and check them out because yeah they are absolutely hilarious as a vegan now looking at it knowing what i know looking at it and seeing the the responses that they get from yeah. people who don't realize it is just and not only that also the comments that people who are clearly vegan put on as if to say um, as if to support it so things like oh yes i there's nothing i love more than starting my day with pug bacon and doodle milk in my coffee you know i can't believe anyone wouldn't want to start with a you know with grilled dog on their plate and that sort of thing and the the way that people go along with it is is just yeah. next level it's absolutely brilliant it's great because you've got people who You've got carnists going on saying, "Oh, you're vegan. No, oh, this is this is disgusting. How could you do this?" And then you've got vegans going on there going, "This is disgusting. How could you do this?" And yeah. then, and then, if if they go on to that, actually check the website out, the, the vegans go, ha, 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 "This is funny," and the carnists just keep going, "This is still disgusting," and you all assholes. <laughs> it's just brilliant. Absolutely, yeah. Cannot get, cannot get enough of that wonderful dog. Uh, dog meat. Brilliant. So, yes. I wasn't sure. That's... And I might need. To, I don't know if you, you you got this. Um, and apologies to Molly. We were running out of time. So I said I was dreading asking what your favourite vegan product was. Yeah, why was that? I was thinking she was going to say Labrador or Rottweiler. And she did. She <laughs> said Labrador, didn't she? No, it's doodle. Is that what she said, no, doodles oh, milk. Doodle milk. Doodle yeah, what's milk, yeah. what's doodle milk? Because I, I felt I felt my pathetically rubbish, stupid joke had been lost, but I didn't know what doodle milk was. So, so it's I left one of it. her. It's one of her products, and it's I can't remember ah, what the first okay. bit is, but it's something something poodle. Right. Okay. So I was yeah. Okay, that worked. Oh, yes. Thank God for that. <laughs> I feel unusually drained after that episode. That's been. I know. Just, as po- as positive as it was, it it was um, yeah, it was just it was just good. It was really good. I, I just think from the from laughing so much and just uh, and also I had to get up at five o'clock to go to London. Oh, okay, that'll be apart it. from that. <laughs> that might be <laughs> it. I met a guy at Park Run on Saturday who has listened to a few episodes in the early days. Right. And gave us some feedback. Shout out to Duncan. Hello, Duncan. Hi, Duncan. And, and uh, I asked him about coming on. And he said, first of all, he said, I'm not sure anyone would be interested in what I've got to say. And then not straight away said, Martin said that. Yes, that's true. But then straight away said, I did used to be in a, I did used to be a fruitarian and lived in a cult in Thailand. And I was like, what? Come on. You're def- I'm definitely getting you on with that. Being a fruitarian for a start, um, and also then was, living in a cult in Thailand. There was someone on George's podcast about volcanism debunked about um, George's podcast. Sorry, I know my mate. <laughs> Our mate George's podcast. Our mate George um, on volcanism debunked 
um, who was a fruitarian, and he was. I think I don't know if he's. In, I don't know if he's a UFC fighter. Wow. And he's he just lives on fruit. He had something like eighteen bananas a day, and I remember. Oh my God. I remember being told you shouldn't have any more than two bananas a day because of potassium overload. However, he has eighteen a day or something like that. So, who knows? Don't know. I find that having a banana and exercising uh, yeah. speeds up the speeds up the digestive process somewhat. Who knows? I think 18, 18 bananas a day you must be on the toilet all day. Oh, I don't know. Okay, well, um, we'll ask Duncan about that when he comes on. Have yes. you ever eaten 18 bananas in a day? And if so, what effect did it have? Thanks for listening, guys. Hopefully you'll hear us next time because you'll obviously want to come back because we're really interested. However, if you do okay. want to get in touch, you can get in touch on all the social media channels. I think we said at the beginning, yes. but we'll do it again anyway as an, as an outro because you just never know. People might skip the intro. So we're on pretty, pretty much all of them. Facebook, Instagram, yep. YouTube, well, you know Twitter. We're on TikTok. We're on TikTok. Fairly dormant. Yeah. You can always just look at our profile picture. Yeah. yeah. And if you do want to come on the podcast, because we, we want people to come on, no matter how silly you think you are or your story might be, you should come on because it's a good laugh and we like to have a giggle. Yep. So just Definitely. give us a, you can even miss messages on any of our social medias or you can just send us an email at howiveganpodcast at gmail.com. Mm-hmm.